Yeah, how do we pronounce your name? Please well, we pronounce it Melm Kerr. We forget oh. that there's a J because uh, pronunciation rules in Denmark have changed since that name was discussed. So how should we pronounce well, it? Well, we should pronounce it Kirsten Melmkir. Melmkir. Yeah. Good. Forget and your, the J. You're Danish then? Yes. People think you're English. Why do they think that? <laughs> You've been in England for so long. <laughs> yes. Okay. We're at the University of Leicester. Kirsten, what do you do here in Leicester? Well, here at Leicester I'm Professor of Translation Studies. And I have been here now. This is my third year here. And I came here to set up a master's program in translation and a research mm -hmm. centre, which I did. So now mm -hmm. I'm running some research projects and teaching on the master's program. Okay, and you're the translation person here? Well, no, there's another translation yeah. person here, my colleague Claire Shi, mm -hmm. and I have help from a number of people in the modern languages department. Okay, you're doing more research or more teaching? Yeah. I think I do about uh, one third teaching, one third research, and one third admin, as we're supposed okay. to do in this okay. context in the UK. Okay. The admin seems to be quite a lot. Okay. Going right back, we're going to ask how you got here. Okay. We're up very high in a high building with a wonderful view. Uh, when you were 23, 24, 25, mm -hmm. where were you and what were you doing? I was living in Birmingham and being a housewife and mother and doing a bit of music teaching. Music, of course. <laughs> well, what's what's the music connection? Uh, well, I set out as a sort of amateur folk singer you know, when I was very in my early mid teens, and um, and I taught guitar and okay. the recorder. You can sing for us. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> no, I can't. <laughs> That's gone. Okay. And um, why were you in England then? Uh, because I married an English person. Okay. That's. The... Mm. And had you been here long, or I mean, you, do you still have roots in Denmark? Will you go back? Oh, I still got roots in Denmark. Yes, I was okay. living there until I married. Okay. So, and you have family there. Well. Yeah, I have some family there still. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And your entire life is spent in English then, or? No, no, my entire life is, is not spent in English because um, I, for, for one thing, I always read Danish books in bed in order to keep up with, mm -hmm. with the language and I speak Danish to the family okay. in Denmark and I speak Danish whenever I can, whenever there are people around okay. who can talk in Danish with me too. Okay. And I currently, interestingly, I have a research student who is Danish and who comes from just about the same place that I come from. It's okay. had almost yeah. the same kind of life. Yeah. Um, well, folk to singer. Now I don't know about the, I'm not sure about the music now. <laughs> so how do you get from folk singing to translation studies? Is there a logical trajectory? Yeah. No, there isn't a logical trajectory. The the uh, the move was um, really coarse because I, I got to miss. Um, academia. I mean, I used to quite enjoy some of the things I did at school, and although when I left school I thought I didn't want to do it anymore, after a few years I did actually. Mm -hmm. And so I set out, I went to a teacher training college for a year and rediscovered philosophy and literature, and then I found that I would have had to give those up because it was a primary school teacher training college, which I hadn't realized when I went there. which shows how organized I was at the time. Um, so I transferred to Birmingham University, where I did English and philosophy. But you got to Cambridge teaching. Yes. Uh, when I finished my undergraduate degree in Birmingham, I got, that was the days when you could get public funding to do PhDs without as much difficulty as now. So I got funding for a PhD, which I also did at Birmingham. Mm -hmm. and what was it on? A translation. Okay. Was was it a logical thing for you then to Yes, because yes, yes, I perhaps I should explain that. When I did English and philosophy, because because I did two courses, you obviously get to drop some things but you can specialise in other things. And I specialised in English language, in the English course and in um, the philosophy of language mm -hmm. in the philosophy course. And I tried to shape as much of my 
study towards translation as I could because I'd, I just always really liked doing translation, which I'd done a bit of, sort of okay. freelance before. Okay. Um, and, and I wrote a third year um, dissertation on the translation of concrete poetry. Mm -hmm. okay. e because, looking at that, you can combine the concrete poets were interested in the categories and perception and so on. And some of them claimed that you needn't translate concrete poetry because it was supposed to appeal directly to the categories and the senses, and mm -hmm. so on, which of course it doesn't, and of course you do have to translate it. So that was quite nice to be able okay. to do that. So it's interesting, you came to translation from practice, from a concern with practice. Yeah, I did really, yeah. yeah. But part, it, the practice was always complemented with a real sort of interest in how the language yeah. worked. Way, way f back from my school days, I had a really good literature teacher. Um, okay, because that's the other thing that's surprising. I mean, when I first read you, you were writing about <coughs> translation from the perspective of, of analytical philosophy. Yeah. Uh, pretty heavy duty stuff yeah. with Davidson especially. I would never have imagined there was practice behind that or literature behind that. Oh really? <laughs> <laughs> well there was. Yeah. There was yeah. Yes, I mean if I could do anything I wanted and didn't have to worry about the rest of life, I would sit down and translate poetry and Hans Christian Andersen okay. into English. Translating from Danish always? Or uh, yeah. Usually, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you don't like all this research stuff and this theory? And oh, I what? love the research stuff. I really yeah. like, I, I very much like working in the area of philosophy that you just mentioned. Mm. Is Davidson your man? Yes. Yeah. That's My philosophical. More than quite. Um, Davidson uh, is a student of quite. Yeah, Davidson. Well, yeah. I like them both a lot, of course, yeah. and I wouldn't <coughs> probably have been Davidson without Quine, since, as you say, he was yeah. his yeah. student. Okay. What should we be doing? You want to sit down and translate poetry? Yeah, but that's indulgent. <laughs> indulgent. Okay, if we're not indulgent, what, what sort of research would you be doing? Would you like to see your, your students to be doing? I would like to see them do the research that they really, really want to do. Mm. Because I think that is probably going to be the best research yeah. that they can do. And what they really want to do is probably also quite a good gauge of what the needs are mm -hmm. around in, in the field. And if you're looking for a prediction about what will be the most important thing in the future, you won't get it from me. But that's because why they're doing the interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> because I think that's too difficult for me to to decide. Obviously, a lot of there's always obviously going to be a lot of interest in automation, more and more yes, automation okay, and translation. Sure. And I think that it's actually really interesting. The sort of human machine interaction, I think, is fantastically yeah. interesting. Yeah. But if everybody started doing that, then I think. There might be a lot of things we might lose sight of. Mm -hmm. The final thing, but we're working on a project on the relation between translation or translating and language learning. Mm. Um, have we discovered anything of interest? But you in this project? Well, the project we're doing, yes. Is, well, I think we've it. discovered a lot of interesting things about what people believe. Yes. What we have not discovered yet, and we won't in this project because there isn't time, is whether it really works. We've discovered, I think, lots of prejudices, yes. lots of quick beliefs about translation. Yes, yes, but we have only discovered a very few empirical studies. Oh yes. And it would be very nice if somebody would do some more. Empirical so studies many experts with so little hmm. knowledge. Exactly. <laughs> yes. I think that's a fantastic way of ending this conversation. Okay. Kirsten, thank you very much. My pleasure. Okay.